We hear a great deal of talk these days about spirituality. People often will say to me, I'm religious, but I'm not, or I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. What does spirituality mean to you, Rabbi Halevi, and how does it fit into the context of Jewish life and thought? I think that statement is a good beginning. Um, many of us, and we know that according to surveys, 40 to 60 uh, percent of people interviewed by the Pew Charitable Trust say, no, no, I'm not religious. Of course, I'm deeply spiritual. And what does that mean for someone who is leading a structured religious community? In some ways, it's generational. We are the post-Holocaust generation, my generation. I am out of the generation of the 60s. And I think at that time, Judaism went through a transition as we recovered from the, the war years. And combined with the establishment of the State of Israel, we were in new territory. And those who went through the 60s asked the question, where am I connected to this Judaism? Is it just about a communal experience? Is, we had a bar mitzvah, now what? And Eastern religions became very, very attractive to Jews in the world. We know, you know, the majority of the early American Buddhists were Jews. And the question began to surface how do we find a personal connection within the framework of a 3,000-year-old tradition? I have spent my spiritual life asking that question. And I uh, personally entered my uh, connection to Judaism through that door. Um, it's all there in the Jewish blueprint. And I believe that we have a pendulum that goes back and forth. Those who think that Judaism is a personal connection suddenly discover that it's really a communal experience and that you need a minion and that you don't pray alone. Those who thought that uh, they didn't need any language skill discover that it would be really good if we understood some Hebrew. Yet the urge to connect to God to have a one-to-one -one deep connection is embedded in Judaism and sometimes needs to be uncovered through making prayer accessible, through meditation, through what we can call spiritual practice, uh, whether it's a practice of a mikvah done in a new manner or a service on a beach or just a new approach to prayer so that prayer becomes something that is a part of our, our understanding and our, and our heart connection, what we call de vekut, uh, a connection. That needs to be revivified. It never left Judaism. It's always a part of it. But our connections need to be reestablished, replugged in. And I think it's, this has been a generation that has looked to solve that problem. I think that it is a, it, first of all, it takes time. And it takes time and it takes the determination that I'm inviting the Holy Spirit, the Shekhinah, into the room. And whatever it takes to make that happen, I'm willing to open those doors. And I'd like the, the door to be open through prayer. Mostly it's open through music. Uh, it's the cantor who does it most of the time. Um, I think more importantly, it's the acknowledgement that you didn't know you were a seeker, but you are. All of us seek a connection to God. And we seek that connection even if we don't have the way to put the words around it. So I have a very, uh, you know, I use a, con a Reconstructionist prayer book that is very much a conservative prayer book with different translations. But the core of the service is the attitude. And for instance, I offer people always the chance to meditate within the service. You can pray this section quietly 
or sit in quiet meditation. I am stunned at the ability of my congregation now to sit for 10 minutes of absolute silence. And they'd go further. And that wasn't true 10 years ago. It takes time. I have uh, certain advantages that other rabbis don't have. I don't have a community particularly of seekers. I brought some into the community, but it's a mainstream Jewish community. I have a beach. And early on, I thought, use the props God gave you. Part of our connection is connection to nature. And I can read a prayer to you, or I can say, will everyone please look at this sun sinking into the ocean as the moon rises? And yes, I am blessed to be at the coast. But it's true if you have four trees outside and the leaves are turning. And we have the ability to open the windows of our synagogue to the world around us to do some nature connection that's a direct spiritual connection at all times and to process that. Um, yoga, meditation, what we consider spiritual practices, I've woven them in and out. As you say, some people will pick it up. For the 10 who do, they're thrilled. Uh, the rest are glad to know that my synagogue does yoga, but I don't particularly do it, you know? Yes. <laughs> we have very different congregations, it's true, <laughs> and I do have a congregation that um, has a higher percentage of mixed marriage, I'm sure, and, and perhaps has a higher percentage of, of people who are looking for, I came here for a spiritual life, or this is interesting to me because I'm looking for a connection in some way. Malibu is a place where people, for instance, uh, are very disconnected. And I feel it's my, my job is to provide community for people first and foremost. I, I, I do believe that opening up the essence of Jewish prayer, the essence of Jewish joy, music, connection, that a combination of the personal and the communal. I, I believe that is the quest of Judaism in the 21st century. And if we're going to see all these, quote, we're not affiliated or we're just spiritual, but we're not religious, what does it take to get you in here? Yes, the surface, what does it take, is a new program. But the ongoing is when I come to a service or I do anything, whether it's a class, a Torah study, uh, my mother's meeting in my office on a Tuesday afternoon while their kids are in religious school, do I walk out a different person? And for me, that's the spiritual connection. I come here this morning from teaching a class in Pirkei Avot. You couldn't get more traditional, right? And we just did this piece about uh, what I call the, um, uh, whether you are, um, are consciously connected to Badavar, uh, you are, you have something that you love someone one because of their qualities or you just love someone because you want something. I believe people left the room different people. Every time I don't want you to leave the person you came as. I say, don't be the person you came in with, to quote Leonard Cohen. Don't be the person you came in with. Mm -hmm. That's my spiritual quest. And if I stretch it out in a yoga, or I ask you to please just be quiet and listen to the ocean and understand that the word Shema means listen, would you please be quiet? That's the change. Mm -hmm.